His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa issued his directives to provide urgent aid to the Palestinian people. The Bahrain News Agency said that His Majesty the King issued his royal directives to provide urgent aid to the Palestinian people in light of the difficult humanitarian circumstances they are facing. It's added that the support comes through the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, UNRWA, within the framework of Bahrain's stances and approach towards supporting brothers in various circumstances, which is one of the constants of Bahrain. Bahrain is always keen on alleviating the suffering of people experiencing hardship. Its start point is many crises and disasters and the sustainability of humanitarian work, which aims to invest in people and their surroundings and to improve their way of life, which is carried out by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation. Bahrain's support was evident in many crises and disasters in various countries of the world, as it participated with its relief teams in various countries in the Arab world and the Middle East. This assistance uh, was an addition to the existing efforts in those countries as the kingdom joined forces with brothers and friends to alleviating their sufferings. Bahrain has harnessed the available capabilities and the popular solidarity of its people to achieve the goals of the relief work, which always comes under royal guidance from His Majesty the King, who recently directed the provision of urgent aid to the Palestinian people in light of the difficult circumstances they are facing through the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees, UNRWA, within the framework of Bahrain's position and approach towards supporting brothers in various circumstances, which is one of the kingdom's constants. An implementation of the royal order of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to preserve the historical and cultural identity of Bahrain's buildings and cities, to renovate the Isa Al Kabir Palace, and to develop Maharag in a way that preserves its storied identity. His Royal Highness Deputy King Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited the Isa Al Kabir Palace, the Pearling Path, and historic and traditional houses in Maharag. The visit marked the implementation of the Muharraq Development Plan and the plan to preserve the historical and cultural identity of Bahraini buildings and cities. His Royal Highness affirmed that Muharraq and His Majesty the King expressed is the mother of cities, a place rich with authenticity and heritage. His Royal Highness affirmed that Muharraq and its people hold a special place in the hearts of Bahrainis and its people carry inspirational stories that have become intertwined with the kingdom's history, making them a source of pride and role models for future generations. During the visit to the Isa Al Kabir Palace, His Royal Highness was briefed on the Muharraq development plan, which aligns with His Majesty the King's royal order. The development plan is based on five pillars, preserving the historical identity of Muharraq, providing housing units that meet the requirements of Bahraini families, preserving heritage buildings, increasing and diversifying the greenery in the governorate, and developing infrastructure services and public facilities. His Royal Highness directed the immediate commencement of the Muharraq Development Plan's procedures, which encompasses acquisitions, detailed designs, and implementation of the plan. His Royal Highness also directed the completion of the Pearling Path project. His Royal Highness affirmed that the government is honored to assume the responsibility of implementing the royal orders to preserve the historical and cultural identity of the buildings and cities of Bahrain. This will include all the governments of Bahrain in accordance with His Majesty the King's wishes. Achieving the aspirations of the Bahraini people. The area under development in Muharraq spans 1.4 million square meters and will feature green spaces covering an area of 12,000 square meters, heritage buildings alongside new and renovated housing units, as well as multi story car parks, standard car parks, and walkways. His Royal Highness was accompanied by the Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Charity Educational Endowment, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and a number of senior officials.
His Royal Highness the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with U.S. Senator Cory Booker and a delegation comprising members of the U.S. Congress at Rifa Palace. His Royal Highness affirmed the strength of bilateral cooperation between Bahrain and the U.S. The Deputy King highlighted the Kingdom's commitment to further strengthening Bahrain-U.S. relations at all levels. He noted the bilateral visit and the signing of agreements and MOUs, such as the Comprehensive Security Integration and Prosperity Agreement, have further enhanced Bahrain-U.S. relations to achieve mutual aspirations. The Deputy King emphasized the two countries' mutual commitment to further opportunities, cooperation, and strategic partnerships to benefit all. He commended the U.S. pivotal role alongside allied countries in safeguarding global security and promoting peace. The Deputy King affirmed the Kingdom's support to regional and global efforts to promote peace and stability. During the meeting, regional and global developments, issues of common interest and ways to further Bahrain-U.S. cooperation were also discussed. The chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Isa bin Salman Education Charitable Trust, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif Zayani, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Deputy King Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the newly appointed Ambassador of the United Kingdom to the Kingdom of Bahrain, Austere Long, at Iglebia Palace. His Royal Highness highlighted the historic relations between Bahrain and the UK, which are based on solid foundations and strategic partnerships. His Royal Highness emphasized the Kingdom's commitment to further strengthening bilateral relations to achieve mutual aspirations. The Deputy King welcomed the Ambassador and wished him success in promoting his diplomatic duties. His Royal Highness highlighted the growing UK-Bahrain multi-sector collaboration through mutual visits and joint agreements. His Royal Highness affirmed the importance of promoting peace, security and prosperity and supporting the Kingdom's development to benefit all. His Royal Highness highlighted the UK's pivotal role alongside allied countries in safeguarding regional and global security and stability. During the meeting, regional and global development, issues of common interest and ways to further Bahrain-UK cooperation to achieve mutual aspirations were discussed. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif Zayani, participated in the 27th GCC EU joint meeting held in Masqat under the chairmanship of the Omani Minister of Foreign Affairs and chairman of the Council's current session, Sayyid Al Busaidi, and the European Union High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Borrell, in the presence of the GCC and EU Foreign Affairs Ministers and the GCC Secretary General, Jasim Libdewi. The Minister of Foreign Affairs stressed that the meeting provides both sides with an opportunity to strengthen the close relations between the GCC and the EU. He said that the GCC and the EU countries share a common goal, which is to achieve lasting peace in the world where stability and security lead to development and prosperity. He added that the world is going through a critical juncture that requires both parties to take comprehensive and collective measures to address various crises and challenges. The Ministerial Council discussed the topics on the agenda and issues a statement in which it affirmed that both sides welcome the progress made to strengthen the strategic partnership between the two sides. The Council expressed its deep concern about the developments in the Israel Gaza and condemned all attacks against civilians. It called for the protection of civilians and reminding the parties of their obligations under the universal principles of international humanitarian law. It also called for restraint, the release of hostages and allowing access to food, water and medicine in accordance with international humanitarian law, stressing the urgent need for a political solution to the crises to avoid a repetition of the violence. They affirmed their denunciation of violence and urged all parties to exercise restraint and calm and agree to continue consultations and communication between the parties. The Council hailed the efforts of Saudi Arabia, the EU and the Arab League to restore their peacekeeping operations in the Middle East in cooperation with Egypt and Jordan.
The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with the European Union High Representative for Foreign Affairs and Security Policy, Joseph Borwell, on the sidelines of the 27th GCC-EU joint meeting. The minister expressed thanks to Borrell for his speech during the meeting in which he condemned the attack on the BDA forces in the southern border of Saudi Arabia and for his condolences over the martyrs and his wishes for a speedy recovery of the injured. He affirmed the deep-rooted friendship relations between Bahrain and the EU and the keenness on developing bilateral cooperation. During the meeting, the Bahrain-EU relations in various fields of common interest were discussed, as well as the latest developments in Gaza and the de-escalation efforts being made regionally and internationally. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Hungarian counterpart Peter Siarto. During the meeting, they discussed the means of developing relations in various fields and the latest regional developments as well as their impact on regional and international security and stability. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Austrian counterpart Alexander Schellenberg. During the meeting, they discussed the means of developing relations in various fields and the regional developments of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Dutch counterpart Hanky Burens Slot. During the meeting, they discussed the deep-rooted friendly relations and the means of developing them in various fields as well as regional developments of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met with his Serpet counterpart, Costantino Combos. During the meeting, they discussed bilateral relations and the means of developing them to serve common interests as well as topics of common concern. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with his Maltese counterpart, Ian Borg. During the meeting, they discussed bilateral relations and the means of developing them to serve common interests as well as topics of common concern. The president of the Electricity and Water Authority, Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, affirmed a decrease in the percentage of malfunctions in medium voltage and low voltage cables compared to last year, despite recording exceptional temperatures and high humidity levels during this year's summer season. He indicated that this decrease reflects the volume of investments in the infrastructure of the electricity and water sectors and the distinguished levels of performance of the technical personnel and advanced technologies. The percentage of medium voltage cable failures decreased by 11% and the low voltage cable failures decreased by 13% compared to last year. The authority also succeeded in achieving a 5% decrease in power outages in the kingdom compared to previous years. It was also able to reduce the time required to restore electricity to subscribers to less than one hour. This percentage reflected positively on the indicators of international network reliability and affirmed the distinction of the electricity network in Bahrain at the global level and its ability to provide services of reliable quality and reliability, supporting the process of urban and economic development in the kingdom. The Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila Hassan, met with her Pakistani counterpart, Nadeem Jan, on the sidelines of the 70th session of the WHO Regional Committee for the Eastern Mediterranean RC70. Dr. Jalila highlighted the strength of Bahraini-Pakistani cooperation in the health sector. The meeting discussed further enhancing cooperation through exchange of expertise. 
under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work in Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, RHF, in partnership with the Ministry of Education, launched the second edition of the Humanitarian Initiative Competition 2023 for secondary school students from public and private schools. The implementation of the second edition of this competition comes as an extension of the success achieved by the first edition and in an effort to encourage students to be creative and invent new volunteer ideas. On this occasion, the Minister of Education, Dr. Muhammad Juma, expressed pride in partnering with the RHF in the competition, which reflects the interest, keenness and appreciation that His Highness Sheikh Nasser attaches to creative youth initiatives, based on his encouragement of the youth and confidence in their ideas and visions. He emphasized the ministry's keenness on the success of the competition and on directing all public and private secondary schools in the kingdom to encourage their creative students to participate in it. For his part, the Secretary General of the RHF, Dr. Mustafa Sayyid, stated that His Highness Sheikh Nasser's sponsorship of the competition stems from His Highness's keenness to encourage creativity and innovate new voluntary humanitarian charitable projects, which promoted the foundation to enter into a strategic partnership with the Ministry of Education and implementation of the competition this year. The sessions of the Bahrain International E-Government Forum 2023 concluded, held at Exhibition World Bahrain. Discussions during the sessions focused on creating a roadmap for deploying AI in Bahrain by integrating it into critical sectors such as education, healthcare and other government domains. The role of the private sector in AI development was also discussed with the attention to technical risks and enhancing cyber security in implementing this technology. The 10th edition of the forum has drawn the participation of government officials, private sector representatives, IT professionals and enthusiasts from various government, private, civil society and academic institutions. The activities of the first day of Fintech World 2023 were held under the title Transformation Agenda, which is programmed by Economist Impact and held at Exhibition World Bahrain under the patronage of the Central Bank of Bahrain and in strategic partnership with Bahrain EDB with the support of Bahrain Fintech Bay. Industry leaders in financial services and fintech gather to share insights, discuss strategic and debate the challenges and opportunities that industry disruptors could bring to their businesses. The three key themes of the inaugural conference are regulation, investment and innovation. Fintech Forward aims to further promote Bahrain as a distinction for all things fintech, encouraging ideas, generation and foreign investment opportunities. Fintech Forward uh, 2023 is, uh, I see, the first uh, uh, fintech forum that is actually uh, being established in Bahrain, uh, mashallah, in, in the region spectrum. Uh, it is uh, backed by the uh, very reputable, reputable and strong organization of Central Bank, EDB, uh, Bahrain Fintech Bay. Uh, and of course, it's, uh, it's done by the Economist uh, Impact. So it's, it's a very, very well organized uh, uh, forum. Uh, I think the impact of that is uh, collectively bringing all the experiences and the right people together in one place uh, to complete the ecosystem. So we're talking about people from international uh, markets, people from uh, regional and local markets. Of course, this allows us to uh, address all the new strategies, uh, address all the challenges in the market, and obviously uh, localize all of the international experiences to make it relevant to our customers. Financial services is one of our key pillars and industries that we service. Uh, we continue to look at ways that we can bring new services and solutions to the financial sector space, uh, fintechs being one of our key uh, partnerships that we bring to markets and to our partners on the ground, hence why Fintech Forward has been an incredible event for us to be a part of. Bahrain has been a pioneer in financial services for over the last 30 years. Um, in terms of transforming financial uh, sector, it has also been a leader. We saw open banking protocols you know, over three years ago, we've seen the rise of fintechs in the market um, and we see the government really enhancing and opening up the regulations to allow for the movement
movement within the financial ecosystem. Um, from a visa perspective, we believe that it can be a pioneer in uh, financial uh, future payments. Um, we look forward to partnering with our partners on the ground in Bahrain to driving those new solutions into the future.